This is the last of three movies about molar conversions. We're going to concentrate primarily on two-step problems this time, but it's the same stuff we did when we were working with donuts, and it's the same stuff we did when we were doing one-step problems. We're now just going to piece it together into two separate steps. So we're going to be we will be working in moles again, and we need to review for a second how many particles there are in a mole, and there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in a mole, the same way that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs in a mole. It's always the same Avogadro's number. Again, it doesn't matter what material you're using, there's always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things in a mole. However, when we are talking about mass, then the actual material does make a difference. So if I gave you a mole of aluminum, that would be 26.981 grams, and a mole of magnesium sulfate would be 120.37 grams. Because the materials are different, when you start piecing all those atoms and molecules together, they have a different molar mass. Let's start with a mass to particle conversion. If you have 2.3 grams of aluminum, how many atoms of aluminum do you have? So you just saw a picture of a mole of aluminum there. Now let's see how much aluminum we would actually need. I would start by saying I have 2.3 grams of aluminum, but that's some unknown number of moles. I don't know how many there are. But I do know from looking at the periodic table that if I had 26.98 grams of aluminum, that I would have one mole. So I can use this ratio to figure out how many moles of aluminum I have. And according to this, I'm going to wind up with 0 0.0852 moles of aluminum. Okay. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking me how many particles or how many atoms of aluminum I will have. So I need to make a second ratio. If I have that many moles, and I want to know how many atoms that is, I'm going to make a new ratio. If I had one whole mole, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and I would have a whole mole. So to figure this out, I'm going to cross multiply, as I've been doing in the last couple videos, and I'll get 1 times x, which is x, and I will get 0.0852 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I'm going to wind up with 5.1 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. So 5.1 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. And I've already rounded to the proper number of significant figures. You can see that I started out with two sig figs and 2.3 and I wound up with 5.1 which is my sig figs for the number of atoms. Particle to mass conversion. All we're going to do is flip around the process. But this time I want to do it using a factor label approach. In factor label we always take our uh, beginning number that we're given, so our 1.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units or particles. So let's just shorten that up to particles. And I'm going to put that over 1 because we always start putting our things over 1. Now let's clean that up a little bit. Now I don't want particles, I want to get rid of them. Do I know how many particles of magnesium sulfate are in a gram? No. But I do know how many particles are in a mole. So I'm going to put particles on the bottom, and I'm going to put moles on the top. I'm going to put one mole on the top, and I know that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles are in a mole. right? So now my particles will cancel out. But that will leave me with moles, and I don't, I don't want moles. I want to know how many grams I'm going to need. So I'm going to multiply by a second fraction, and I'm going to put moles on the bottom so I can get those to cancel out. And I'm going to put grams on the top. And I know that one mole, as I looked up before, is 120.37 grams. Where did I get that from? Well, magnesium sulfate is MgSO4. And I just totaled up the molar masses of one magnesium, one sulfur, and four oxygens to get 120.37 grams. Now when I multiply my fractions, what I'm really doing is multiplying 1.5 times 10 to the 24th times 120.37, and then I'm going to divide all that mess by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I'm going to wind up with 
299.9 grams, which I'm just going to round to 300 grams of magnesium sulfate. You really need to keep two sig figs, uh, but there's not an easy way to get it unless you use scientific notation in this case. Lastly, let's use our graphical way of solving these things, and we'll take this problem. Sucrose has a molecular formula of C12H22O11, and if you have one tablespoon, it comes out to be about 14.54 grams of sucrose. Well, how many molecules of sucrose do you have? So we know that we're going to start over here with mass, um, because we were given 14.54 grams, and we're going to have to solve for moles by dividing by the molar mass. And then once we have moles, to get the particles, we are going to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I've got 14.54 grams, which I'm going to divide by the molar mass of C12H22O11. Now, if you take 12 Cs, multiply that by mo Cs molar mass of 12.011, uh, 22 Hs, and 11 Os, you're going to find out that sucrose has a molar mass of 342.3 grams per mole. Now, when you divide that, you're going to wind up with 0 0.0425 moles of sucrose. Okay, but that's not what the question's asked. All we've done is divide by the molar mass. Now we have to take this number and multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in a mole. P in a mole. Um, our moles will cancel out and we'll be left with particles. And if you do that, you have 2.56 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of sucrose. Now I want you to pause the video and try these on your own. If you had 75 grams of ammonia, how many molecules of ammonia would you have? And if you have 1 million molecules of oxygen gas, how many grams of oxygen would you have? Give it a try, pause the video, check back in in a second. The highlights of these problems, they are two-step problems. So the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out the molar mass of both the ammonia and the oxygen. So the molar mass of ammonia, NH3, is 17 grams per mole. And you'll take the 75 grams that you were given and divide by 17 to give you 4.4 moles of NH3. Once you know you have 4.4 moles, you can multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and you'll get 2.7 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Again, if you're using factor label, you'll do all this in one giant step, but if you were to break it down into individual steps, you'd wind up getting 4.4 moles as your intermediate answer. In the second question, you have oxygen gas. Now, this is really important because oxygen is a diatomic molecule. It comes as O2. And the molar mass of O2 is 32 grams per mole. So if you had one point, or sorry, if you had one million molecules, you'd divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So a million divided by Avogadro's number would give you 1.7 times 10 to the minus 18th moles, almost zero moles. A million molecules is so small compared to the number of a mole. So we're going to take that really tiny number of moles and then multiply it by the molar mass of 32, and we'll wind up with an answer around 5 times 10 to the minus 17th grams. Again, a million molecules of oxygen weigh almost nothing. Good luck with all these problems, guys. Again, review your one-step and your two-step problems, and check in for the next video, which will be all about uh, molecular and empirical formulas.